Here's a question for all you type A people out there. Have you ever worked so hard for a dream job or a promotion that you pushed yourself beyond your limits and you sacrificed your health? Chloe Benjamin knows what that's like. She went from being an assistant to a New York Times bestselling author with her book, The Immortalist. It was a moment she dreamed of. So behind the scenes, though, she was grappling with stress and chronic migraines. She ended up in the ER. In a recent article for The Cut, she wrote this about her physical breakdown, saying, I had put my writing, my ambition, and my success over not just my health, but my experience of life. Wow. She joins us now with her story and some advice for a less stressful life. Chloe, I'm so glad to see you because oh. I so related to this story because I'm, I'm a big believer. I'm pushing through, plowing through. You said that you did that almost to the expense, not almost, to the expense of your health. When did you realize, okay, I have a real problem here and that I can't push through? Well, I think it's interesting because it was a slow realization. And in fact, it was, um, you know, I was hearing these cues from my body. The body like, speaks through pain. Yes. Um, when, when you're not listening, you know, to anything else. And slowly I started to realize I could no longer ignore those signals, but I did for a very long time. But what were the signals specifically really that pain. they were speaking to you? Pain, yeah, just increasing migraines. You know, I, I was so grateful to go on a book tour that was quite extensive. I was so honored that this book found a wide audience, but every time I did an event, I would get a migraine, and I didn't um, listen to that until it was too late. And what does listen to your body really mean? Well, we hear this phrase, listen, yeah, listen to your to body. Your body. Yeah. And for me, you know, it, it became very granular. It was, how am I holding my tension? Um, how am I breathing? I realized that I held so much tension in my shoulders. I think a lot of us do. And so I actually put stickers around my house. And when I saw the sticker, that was my cue to relax my shoulders. Uh -huh. um, I almost had this detective quality of what makes my body feel good? What makes my body feel bad? And, and really getting to know myself in that way so that my body could trust my mind mm -hmm. and my mind could trust my body. There's so much pressure on people, and people put it on themselves, to push through that kind of pain. So on the one hand, there's listen to your body, but on the other hand, there's we get this cultural message, or maybe you can tell me where you think it comes from, to push through. Yeah. Could you trace that back yeah. to some origin? Because, Tony, sometimes I think, is it, is it really that bad? Is pain really that bad? I wonder about this, too. Well, I think we live in a world in which productivity is prized over almost yes. anything else. Yeah. And, you know, there's this idea of grind culture right now, you know, no days off, push. And I think that can be so harmful because it means that, again, we're privileging our work over our experience of life. And why are we doing that and how can we change it? Yeah. So and how you said you've changed. You've changed I have, life. yeah. How you, know, you live. It, it's taken a few years to make those changes, and honestly, I never thought I could. I've been ambitious and profess perfectionistic since childhood, and those qualities got me to a place of success, but they also hurt me. Um, so, you know, the way that I live is totally different, and one thing that I hope might be helpful to others is an idea of pacing. So rather than waiting until I finish a scene or a book or a tour to rest, I'm resting throughout the day. Mm. Um, you know, I'll take a five minute break to meditate. I'll walk around the block, even just looking out the window for a few minutes when I'm on a screen. And this way, my energy moves like a wave instead of building to a point of collapse. I can imagine younger people, particularly younger creative people, listening to you and saying it's very easy for Chloe to say this now because she's already made it. She wrote a bestseller. Mm -hmm. That's so true, Tony. Yeah. What do you say to that? When well, you're first starting out, it's very difficult. Right. When you're, when you're still yeah. trying to make it, make it, yes. you, you're still trying to push through, right? It is. It's true. Although when I look back, I think maybe I didn't have to do as much touring as I did for the book to be successful. And maybe it's okay to say no, because when you say no, what are you saying yes to? Yeah. That might be your health. That might be creating a way of working that's sustainable. Because the thing is, you don't want to have one book that's a success and then not be able to write or promote for years. Yeah. So actually, if it, you know, I think maybe it's a fallacy that you have to push and push and push until you make it because then you crash. I think it definitely maybe is. Maybe you, you can no, make it. What are you it. saying yes to? I like that. Yeah, and maybe you know you can Chloe. make it. Oh. oh, sorry. That's okay. Finish the sentence. Off. Finish the sentence. Just finish it. Um, you know, maybe you can do it in a more sustainable way. Okay. I think it's definitely true. I'm going to read the Immortalist. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chloe Benjamin. <laughs> yes. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.